Hi book lovers, welcome back to my channel. I have my July book haul today. I have uh, quite a few books to share with you all. I got about 60 books last month and of course half of them are going to be used historical romances that I bought off of eBay and Amazon. I honestly don't know why I ever thought that I would actually stop buying all of these used books um, after April but yeah I can't stop buying them but I'll save those for later on in the video. For now I'm just going to share all of the fantasy books that I got uh, from publishers, from authors, and books that I bought myself. First is this beautiful red and yellow stack from Avon Books. I got Take a Hint Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. This is like the standalone sequel to Get a Life Chloe Brown which I absolutely loved last year. It was one of my favorite books from 2019 and for some reason I still haven't even started Danny Brown. It honestly sounds perfect for me. It has the friends to lovers trope and the fake dating trope um, and the hero is also a bodyguard. I already know so many people love this one so I really need to get to it soon. And then I also got No Offense by Meg Cabot. This is releasing this month in August and I absolutely love Meg Cabot. I mean she's pretty much the reason why I love reading and I love romance so much. I pretty much would borrow her books every time that I would go to my library and I just inhaled her entire backlist when I was about 12. So I love her and I adore her. This one is part of her adult contemporary romance series. It's set in like the Key West, um, small island town. I believe this series is called Little Bridge Island. Um, there was a prequel novella and then book one was No Judgments. I sadly did not like No Judgments, but no offense, sounds adorable. The heroine is the local librarian and she ends up falling for the town sheriff who goes to investigate the library because a random newborn was left there. There is a little cat on the cover and I'm just really hoping that I like it more than No Judgments. Another book that I got from Avon is You Had Me at Ola by Alexis Daria. This one I actually have read. It only just released. Um, I ended up giving it three and a half stars. Like it was cute and sweet um, but I had some problems with the hero. Still it's a great romance if you love Hollywood type of stuff like acting, scripts. The main characters um, who are from soap opera and telenovela backgrounds. They're new leads on this kind of Netflix show. The show and this book is very Latinx forward. If you want to read a book with a great diverse cast of characters, this one is great. I also love this cover so much. It was my first time reading this author. I would definitely try her again. I just wish I kind of loved this one a little bit more. And last of my Avon books is Loathe at First Sight by Suzanne Park. This one I have I've heard that it's more along the lines of women's fiction, so don't really try to go into this expecting romance or heavy romance. I'm definitely adjusting my expectations now when I do start it. This one is an Own Voices Korean American contemporary book. It's a bit of enemies to lovers. The heroine is a video game producer and she is um, now part of a team with this guy that she really does not like. They end up growing closer together as they work on this mobile game so it sounds very techy but I do love reading a heroine who are in a STEM field and of course I'm very excited to read an Asian author. Next I got The Beat Match by Kelly Siskind. This one I got all the way from Canada which is where Kelly Siskind lives so thank you Kelly for this. I am so excited to read this one because it's part of the Showman series and book two was Don't Go Stealing My Heart and that one is one of my favorite books this year. I absolutely loved how sweet and adorable that romance was. So I have very high hopes for this one. It's actually a pretty unique premise. The main characters are DJs of all things. The hero has been groomed his whole life to be like this Wall Street guy but he actually moonlights um, as a DJ. So no one knows his other occupation. This one is like a brother's best friend kind of romance except the brother has unfortunately passed away. The heroine is the girl that the hero promised her brother that he 
would take care of her after his death, which makes him sort of like a guardian. Um, so there's a bit of a forbidden um, aspect to this romance. The heroine's passion, coincidentally, is also being a DJ. I'm so excited to see how that all works out. And it's definitely my first time reading about main characters who are DJs. And then I got The Player Next Door by K.A. Tucker. This one is her latest standalone. It's second chance romance, enemies to lovers. Um, I like this one. I give it three and a half stars. Like it was cute, but there's a lot of drama and misunderstanding going on. But if you do like that kind of drama, this book will probably work better for you. Shane and Scarlett were kind of high school sweethearts. They had this thing during one summer, um, during summer camp, but right after summer ended, Shane pretty much dumped her and moved on immediately. And Scarlett has never gotten over that and never forgiven Shane for completely breaking her heart. Now she's moved back to their small town and moved next door, right next door to Shane, who is now a single dad. It is a fun and easy read, though I wouldn't necessarily say it's a fluffy kind of romance, but it does have its super sweet moments, especially with Shane being very determined to make up for his wrongs and try again. And then I got Crushing on You by Jen Trin. This is book one in her Burl Friend series. They are Asian American romances with a rock climbing theme to them. This one's cute. I give it three, three and a half stars. Um, the romance was nice, though the characters did annoy me at times. The main characters meet at a wedding um, between mutual friends. I really love the Asian rep in this one, the Chinese American rep. I thought that aspect of this book was so well written, so well done. I just wish that the characters didn't get on my nerves as much as they did. I do have book two though that the author also sent and I'm so excited for that one. It sounds both angsty and adorable. The heroine is widowed and she ends up falling for the super sweet musician. So I'm very excited to continue on with this series. I also got an arc of Not My Romeo by Ilsa Madden Mills. This is the book that she's publishing with Montlake. It seems like a lot of indie romance authors nowadays are publishing with Montlake, which I mean good for them. It's a sports romance, football, the hero is a famous quarterback, and they end up going on a blind date together. It's been a long time since I last read Ilsa Madden Mills, but this one sounds cute. I'm really excited to get to it. And then I got Black Tangled Heart by Samantha Young. This is her third book in the Play On series and I love this one. I give it four stars. It was so good, so intense. I did not expect how crazy things went in this one. It's like a second chance romance, enemies to lovers, there's revenge. It gets a little dark and twisted um, but it was so so good. I could not put this one down. I also got One Hot Italian Summer by Karina Halley and this is one of my new favorites this year. It was amazing. It is one of her swoony most romantic romances that I've read from Karina Halley. It's just so sweet and wholesome and adorable and it also takes place in Italy. This book really made me wish that I was currently living in Italy in Tuscany and that I had a gorgeous Italian single dad to fall in love with. Claudio is the perfect hero, so sensual and very determined to make Grace fall in love with him. So everyone needs to read this one. It is just so feel good um, and also this cover is beautiful. And then I got these six books from Sourcebooks that came in this gigantic package. First is Conventionally Yours, which is an MM romance. It's a road trip, enemies to lovers, there's conventions and fandoms. It just sounds like a lot of fun. There's also the there's only one bed kind of thing in this one um, and I still need to get to it. Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall. This is the only one that I've read in this stack. Sadly, I didn't love it as much as everyone Everyone else did. I gave it three stars. I actually listened to the audio. Um, the book is actually pretty thick. It's a fake dating MM romance. Um, the hero Luke needs a fake boyfriend to improve his tarnished image. So in comes Oliver who is literally the perfect guy to clean up any kind of image. I like these two characters though I did feel like Oliver was a bit boring for me. I sadly never really got that much invested in their romance, in their story, so it's just really hard for me me to love this one. Still, I am definitely in the minority for this. Um, everything I've seen except for one friend 
Um, everyone seems to love it. I got The Tourist Attraction by Sarah Morgan Thaler. This one is set in a mountain town in Alaska and we've got a grumpy hero. I love the grump and sunshine trope so this one sounds really great. The Perfect Escape by Suzanne Park which is actually her debut. She debuted with this young adult book. The main characters meet at this zombie themed escape room where they both work at so uh, that sounds interesting. Not 100% sure I'll read this one just because I'm not I just don't read young adult anymore. And I also got these two young adult books, um, Miranda Keneally, who I used to love so much um, as a teen. I loved her 100 Oak series. I'm not sure if this is part of her series or not, um, but that series is great. And If We Were Us by K.L. Walther, which I'm actually giving to my friend Desiree. This one is like a love square. We have four people complicated things going on. I forgot that I also got these two new releases from Avon. This one is the re-release of Love is Blind by Lindsay Sands. It has a new cover and everything. It's historical romance. The hero needs a bride. The heroine needs a husband. The heroine is not technically blind. She just has really, really bad eyesight, which I relate to. And The Devil of Downtown by Joanna Shoup, which is the third and final book in her Uptown Girl series, which I adore. It's Gilded Age historical romance. We have the youngest sister of the three sisters, Justine, falling for the top gangster of Manhattan. I enjoy this one so much. I mean, I love the whole series. Joanna Shoup is just a fantastic writer. She writes the best characters. I love these two, though I am very sad that it's the last book in the series. I got a couple books from Harlequin. Hairpin Curves by Elia Winters is part of their Karina Adores line, which is um, about LGBTQ romances. This one is an FF romance. It's frenemies to lovers, and they're on a road trip together. Um, for a wedding. This Harlequin Desire book is Marriage by Arrangement by Sophia Singh Sasson. It's a South Asian romance. We've got an architect heroine who falls for her latest client, who is known as the sexiest bachelor in India. There's also a little fake engagement involved. A Winning Season by Rochelle Ehlers. This one is a baseball romance. And Settling an Old Score by Dolores Fawson, which is a cowboy romantic suspense. And then I got Bound by Shadows by Kathy Lyons. This one one is Paranormal Romance, Bear Shifter. Honestly, I love bears because of Nalini Singh, so I'm very excited about this one. Paradise Cove by Jenny Holiday, which is book two in the Matchmaker Bay series. I did not read book one yet, but I do enjoy Jenny Holiday's writing, and I love the beach vibes on this cover. The main characters are both dealing with broken hearts, but of course, the small town matchmakers are trying to push them together. And I also got Sorry Not Sorry by Sophie Ranald. This one, the heroine listens to a podcast that challenges women to find their inner bad girl. So that's what the heroine does. It sounds interesting. I do like the margarita on the cover. And then I got... <laughs> And then I got Crushing It by Lorelai Parker. This one has a STEM heroine. She is a game developer and she reunites with an old college crush, but she also is getting a very friendly with a local bar owner. So it seems like a bit of a love triangle going on here. Next I got Ghosting by Tosh Skilton. This one, the main characters are actually ghost writers. They're writing for rival online dating services. They meet online, but of course they don't know who they who the other person is. So it kind of sort of sounds like the movie You've Got Mail, maybe. And another book that I got from Kensington, these last few were from Kensington, is Island Affair by Priscilla Oliveras. This one is another I wish I could have loved it more read for me. It's a romance set in Key West with fake dating. The heroine has been dumped by her boyfriend just as she's arrived in Key West to meet with her family who she does not have the best relationship with, so now she needs someone to help be a buffer uh, for her and her family. This is where Luis comes in, our firefighter hero. This author's writing wasn't really my style. It's a bit formal and cheesy, sort of like a, a Harlequin book, but I did like these characters and I really enjoy Luis's big Cuban family. Apparently we are getting more books set in this series in Key West and I'm really hoping the next book is going to be about one of Luis's brothers. I also got an arc of Catherine Center's latest book which has just been released. It is What You Wish For. It is a 
standalone, although it does match the covers for her two other books. I loved her release from last year, Things You Save in a Fire, so much. So I'm really excited to get into this one, which is a second chance romance. You know if there's a second chance romance in it, I am there. The main characters now reunite um, and they both work at this school, but the hero now is very cold and distant and nothing like um, the man that the heroine used to love. Catherine Center's writing is fantastic. So, so excited to get into this one. Next, I got Hard to Handle by Kate Bromberg. This was sent from the author. She even signed it, which was super nice. I've enjoyed most of her books. I think Driven was the only one that I didn't really like from her, um, but I've heard amazing things about Hard to Handle. It's a second chance romance and a hockey romance, so it sounds perfect for me. Um, I was amazed when I went to look at it on Goodreads because it has such high ratings. It's like four and a half stars. So I have very high expectations after seeing how many people loved it. And when Harlequin had their buy two get two free coupon thing going on a couple weeks ago, I bought these four books for the price of two. Whenever they have like a buy one get one free thing or a 50% off um, sale, I usually do get something. Although I was sad a lot of things that I wanted were no longer in stock. Um, not sure why they're no longer in stock. Couldn't get them. Um, I ended up with these four. The first one is Lush Money by Angelina M. Lopez. I recently got book two from Harlequin, um, so I figured might as well get book one. The heroine is Latinx and a female billionaire. That was the main thing that sold me on wanting to read this one, just because I don't really come across very many um, female billionaires in my romances. It's always, well, mostly always the guys who are the billionaires. Her hero is a very poor prince. They decide to enter into a marriage of convenience. Um, he needs money to help save his kingdom. She wants a princess for a daughter. It just sounds like so much fun. I love marriage of conveniences, so can't wait to get to this one. I also got the first three books in Adriana Herrera's Dreamer series, American Dreamer, which is my favorite of the series, American Fairy Tale, and American Love Story. These three are MM romances. Book four is the only MF romance so far, but I adore these three. I recently talked about books two and three in my latest wrap up, so go check it out. The audiobooks are also fantastic if you want to listen to them. These two books are from Hello Lovely's Summer Bloom Boxes uh, with the special exclusive edition covers. This is A Love Letter to Whiskey by Candy Steiner, which I have not read yet, but I think it's one of her most popular ones and I've heard it's super angsty. I'm not the biggest fan of reading about alcoholics for like main characters, but I don't know. We'll see if I ever get to this. And this is the exclusive edition of Dear Mr. Black by Shonora Williams. This one I have read. I sadly did not love it because the ending was not what I wanted because at the time it was a standalone, there was no sequel. Um, so if you know what I mean, then you can understand why I wasn't a fan of this ending. But since now there is an actual sequel um, that ends much better, I would recommend it just because it's very, very steamy. It's forbidden romance. The heroine falls in love with her best friend's father. Next, I got Kitty Valentine Dates a Rockstar. This is book three in the series, in the Kitty Valentine series, where she's dating different kinds of men. She's trying to spice up her love life because um, as a writer she is asked by her publisher to write sexier books so they can sell better and her latest one is This Rock Star. I got Diamond in the Rough by Sky Warren. This was sent in a really nice package from the author. It is a dark romance. We've got kidnapping. And the last of my non-used books is The Hating Season by K.A. Lindy. This is actually a giveaway win. It's book two in the season series. I haven't read book one yet, though I do have it. We've got a bad boy hero who needs to clean up his image. His publicist heroine tries to fix it. Instead, she ends up in his bed. I am very intrigued by the fact that the heroine is named English. That's the first time I've ever seen that name, um, so it's an interesting choice. Finally, we are at my used books part of this book haul video. This month though, for July, I didn't buy quite as much as I did in the past months, um, so my wallet is thankful for that. This is book four of the series, one of my favorite series, urban fantasy series of all time. I didn't really set out to collect the whole series in hardcover. 
um, but I own most of them in hardcover now, so might as well complete my collection. So that's why I got this one. The other hardcover that I got is this beautiful edition of Indigo by Beverly Jenkins, which is my favorite book from this author. I love this book so, so much. I was so happy I was able to find this edition. I was looking for it. I actually thought I was getting the paperback, but it ended up being the hardcover. If you haven't read this one yet, do it. It is absolutely brilliant. Hester and Galen's romance is so swoony. Galen is, once he realizes that Hester is the one for him, he is so determined to make her fall in love with him. He's perfect. They're perfect together. Everyone just needs to read this book. I also bought The Rogue of Fifth Avenue by Joanna Shoup. This is the first book in the series and the only book that I needed to complete the trilogy and also it is my favorite of the series. We've got a lawyer hero who has a bit of a darker past than people expect. He ends up falling for the daughter, the oldest daughter of an important client who is pretty much acting like a female Robin Hood. I love the chemistry between Frank and Mamie. Joanna Shoup always writes such steamy romances and the series is so good. I also got these two old school Julia Quinn books. I've been collecting more of them these days. Brighter Than the Sun was published in 1997 and it's got this beautiful back cover. It is so adorable. She's on a freaking swing. I love it. This is actually book two in the Linden Sisters series. I actually recently just bought book one, the original cover of book one. So excited to read it because when I posted about it on Instagram, so many people shared how much they love this series, especially book one. And I also got Minx, which is the third book in the Splendid trilogy. All three of them do have original old school covers, but I was only able to find Minx so far. It is beautiful. It's probably my favorite of the three in the series. And there's also a little bunny in the corner. Minx published in 1996, which is the year I was born. I was so happy I found this and it was only a dollar, so obviously couldn't pass it up. I finally got my first Cat Martin books and I 100% got them because of the step backs. Her step backs are uh, stunning. I love them so much. I'm still on the hunt for a couple of them, um, but this one is Bold Angel. These books also have beautiful embossings on them. I don't know if you can tell, but it's just so pretty. And there's some gold embossing going on. And this is what the step back looks like. This one is an enemies to lovers historical romance and the hero is a freaking warlord. He actually saved the heroine's life Life, but she also can't forget that he was the one or his men were the one who hurt her family and stole their land. So that's why they're enemies. I got Devil's Prize and it also has this pretty gold embossing and the step back is so beautiful. Love it. This one actually sounds so good. The main characters play at a gaming table and the heroine loses mainly because the hero cheated, but he's willing to forgive her debt if she spends one night in his bed. So I'm intrigued. And my last Cat Martin book is Midnight Rider, and there's this little bird embossing on it that looks so nice in person. And this rainy step back is stunning. This one is a captive romance, which I do kind of love. Um, the blurb actually sounds amazing. The heroine is forced to marry a guy that she doesn't love, um, who is not the hero, but when the hero finds out, he ends up kidnapping her to his lair so that they can be together. The hero is a sexy Spaniard who also moonlights as a outlaw. This blurb sounds fantastic, definitely my favorite favorite of the three Cat Martins that I have. I've never read her before, but I would definitely start with this one. And these three actually released in 1994, 95, and 96 in this order. I had to get another one of Joanna Lindsay's old school covers. I'm pretty much almost done with collecting all of them. This is A Heart So Wild, published in 1986. This one is like historical road tripping, just without a car. The heroine has found her long lost father and she needs someone to accompany her um, across America. The hero is the best gunslinger around. You can see he has a gun holster on the cover. The original cover of To Tame a Highland Warrior by Karen Marie Monning. This is book two in her Highlander series, which was the very first historical romance books that I ever read. The series is part paranormal romance, part historical romance. The first two are straight up historical, but like from books three and on, I believe. Um, there's some time travel 
travel and some magic involved. But this is book two, Medieval Highlanders, and now I need to try to find the original cover of book one. My favorite books that I was able to find last month are these old school Lisa Clayfus books. Oh my gosh, look at how beautiful they are. These are actually the two books in the Berkeley Faulkner series, Where Passion Leads is book one, and Forever My Love is book two. These two are out of print and so freaking hard to find, especially if you're not willing to pay like a hundred bucks for them. I luckily did not have to pay that much, um, and they are both in amazing condition. In Where Passion Leads, we've got a rig hero who ends up taking the heroine's virginity uh, without realizing that she's actually a virgin. In Forever My Love, the heroine makes a bargain with this older, powerful man. She would pretend to be his mistress and she would in turn gain his protection. She never expects to meet the Duke hero and fall in love with him, but of course she has that bargain going on so it's not that easy to be with him. I was just so happy I was able to find these two and now my like old school Lisa Kleypas, um collection is complete. I actually have my two other ones right here. These are the two other old school covers that she has. I'm also excited to see what Lisa Kleypas's first romance books were like. I think the series was her very first. Where Passion Leads was published in 1987 and then this one a year after. And the last author that I got in my July haul is Julie Garwood. I've been collecting more of her books and I think I'm pretty much done at this point. I have like one or two left. This one is For the Roses. This is the first book in the Claiborne series and it actually ended up turning into a movie called Rose Hill and Jennifer Garner stars in it. I also got one pink rose to complete the series. This is book two and a novella. Books two, three, and four are actually all novellas and I think someone told me on Instagram that um, Julie Garwood actually told these stories, these novellas. Um, they were stories that she told to her kids, bedtime stories or something like that. I don't know if that's 100% right, um, but it's a cute story. I also just checked Goodreads. I thought I had the whole series now, but I don't. There's a book five, which is full length, like book one. I also got Prince Charming, which is a marriage of convenience. The London heroine wants to move to America. In order to do so, she is marrying an American Rancher. I got a bunch of her old school covers, like the first printings, which have this really pretty metallic sheen to them. This one is Gentle Warrior, which has this pink metallic sheen to it, and I think this was her very first published book. The heroine wants revenge against the people who destroyed her family, so she asks the Baron hero for help. Rebellious Desire, which has such a pretty cover. I got The Bride, which is actually an art copy um, from 1989. I had no idea they did arcs back then, um, but this one is the only one that I have read of this stack. It's Medieval Scotland with a Highlander layered hero, and it's also Marriage of convenience. There's also Guardian Angel, which has this sheen to it. There's actually a pirate in this one, but sadly it's not the hero. The hero actually wants the pirate dead. I also got one of her Buchanan books. Um, this one is Mercy, book two in the series. It's a romantic suspense series. I've actually only read the last book, which is book 13, um, but I love that one, so I might give the entire series a go if I find the time. I found this old, old school cover of Honor's Splendor. I was actually trying to find the cover that like matches these covers, but I found this one instead. The heroine becomes the hero's captive after he raids her brother's castle. I also found this cover of The Gift, um, which is pretty unique. I've never seen any of her books look like this. This one is actually the sequel to Guardian Angel. These are books two and three of the Crown Spy series, and this hero is actually the pirate that I mentioned before. The hero is a Marquis who used to be a pirate, and the heroine was actually the child bride that was promised to him. Castles is actually the fourth and last book in the Crown Spy series. This one has a marriage of convenience with a princess heroine, and the last book of this haul is The Prize. Uh, this is one of Julie Garwood's standalones. The heroine is a captive and she's actually forced to marry one of the London nobles. Not sure how that works, um, but luckily the guy that she chooses they actually do fall in love. So that's my haul for July. I don't think anyone's really surprised that I bought 
more historical romances. Let me know if you've read any of these books, any of these authors, or if there's some that you want to read yourself. As always, links will be down in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye!